This is a video by Real Life Lore, brought to you by Audible. Agoraphobia is defined as the fear of open spaces, public transit, shopping malls, or simply being outside of your home. But is the fear really realistic, and is it actually possible to live an entire life completely indoors? And weirdly, if the entire human species suffered from this phobia, then could we all theoretically live inside of one gigantic building and not ever have to leave our homes, or at least never have to leave the comfort of the building? The answer is yes, but let's first take a look at some real-world concepts before venturing into the detailed insanity of all living, eating, sleeping, and breathing in the same building. Perhaps the most realistic proposal of fitting an entire city's worth of people inside of the same building is the Shimizu Megacity Pyramid, which is planned to be built in the Bay of Tokyo in Japan. When finished, the pyramid is expected to be 14 times taller than the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt at just over 2 kilometers tall, and will be capable of supporting a population of 1 million people who will live inside of it. That means that the building could support the entire population of the U.S. state of Montana, or house the population of entire large cities like San Jose California or Cologne, Germany. The building would have 8 square kilometers of floor space when finished, which is four times larger than the actual country of Monaco, and even larger than the UK territory of Gibraltar. However, a building this massive cannot actually be built with current construction technology. Construction is anticipated to begin in the year 2030, and the building is projected to be completed by the year 2110, which is ludicrous if you think about it. That is 93 years from now if you're watching this video in 2017, which means that most of us will probably not be alive by the time that this building is finished being built. Think of all the history that could possibly happen within 93 years, and this building still may not even be finished after all of that. It's not completely unprecedented, however. This cathedral in the city of York first started being built in the year 1220. Imagine being the first person who laid down the first brick to begin building this cathedral. He would have spent his entire lifetime working on the project, and so would have his son, and his son, and his son, and his son, and so on until 252 years later the cathedral was finally finished being built. Nine generations would have passed from the time that the first person began working on it. It would have been like if your relative from 1765 had begun building something and you today right now just finished it. You probably can't even think of any relatives that you may have even had back then, and that problem would have been even more severe in the Middle Ages. A distant relative would have begun building a building and their name would have been long forgotten, but you, centuries later, would be still working on and completing what they had originally started anyway. It's very strange to think about, but let's move back to the Mega Pyramid building in the distant future of 2110. Power is generated by solar panels on the building's trusses. Transportation is provided by massive accelerating walkways, elevators, and personal rapid transit tubes with automated shuttle pods that zip from one part of the building to another. The building is full of homes, offices, restaurants, stores, and is a fully functioning city of one million people who live entirely indoors. Nobody would have to really ever leave, but one million people isn't all of us, so let's envision something like this but on a much larger scale. First off, let's envision where would be the most strategic location on Earth to place a building that could house all 7.478 billion of us. My answer is probably Brazil, and specifically right here. The reasoning for this is largely because of water, since 12% of all the Earth's surface freshwater is located in Brazil, and the second largest dam in the world is located nearby. I'll get more into the reasoning later, so let's assume that we've moved everybody's houses and homes as they are together into one place. Everybody on Earth gets to keep their current size living space, so what would this look like altogether? For reference, the average U.S. house built in 2013 was 241 square meters in size. According to the UN, however, 13% of the world population lives in 5 square meters or less of living space. 28% have between 5 and 9 square meters of space, 24% have between 10 and 14 square meters, 18% have between 15 and 19 square meters, and only 18% of the world's population lives in 20 square meters or greater sized houses. So American houses are certainly not the global norm, and averaging out all of these numbers gives us a building with 90,860 square kilometers of living space in a two-dimensional view, about the size of Jordan in the Middle East if it was all just one floor. But, if we constructed the building to be as high as the current tallest residential building in the world at 414 meters or 101 stories high, then the living space of everybody on Earth would take up an area of around 900 square kilometers on the surface, a little less than the size of the Faroe Islands in Denmark. 
As for food, after a lot of research, it appears that sweet potatoes are the most calorie-intensive crop that you can grow. If we utilized efficient farming techniques and made use of vertical farms with artificial sunlight, we could construct a one cubic kilometer building that would be dedicated solely to producing sweet potatoes for our population. Each cubic kilometer mega farm could produce enough sweet potatoes to feed over 27 million people a 1500 calorie per day diet. So if we also built 275 of these buildings connected to the main living space, then we could feed the entire human race inside a steady diet of pure sweet potatoes. Since humans need to drink 2 liters of water to survive each day, and the nearby dam has a reservoir of 29 cubic kilometers, we could have enough drinking water nearby to last us for over 4,000 years. Of course, some of the water would be used for other purposes like agriculture, but it would still be enough to last for centuries using all of our needs inside the mega building if we kept maximum efficiency and assume that nothing goes wrong. Finally, we need space for other things besides just living. In New York City, about 75% of the zoning ordinances are for residential property, while the remaining 25% is for commercial, manufacturing, transportation, or park space. If we kept that same ratio in our mega building, then we would add an additional 225 square kilometers worth of building space on the Earth's surface that would stand as high as the residential portion. Altogether, our mega building that could house all of humanity in the same living space that they live in today, complete with all water needs, a diet of pure sweet potatoes, stores, parks, and transportation would would take up an area of 1,339 square kilometers on the Earth's surface, still just a little smaller than the Faroe Islands in Denmark. The parts devoted to water storage and agriculture would be one kilometer high, and the rest of the building would be 414 meters high. In terms of power, the nearby dam would provide a lot of it, but probably wouldn't be enough to power the entire building. It is estimated that a solar panel array the size of Spain could provide enough power for the entire world's energy needs. So, a grouping of solar panels of this size nearby the building would provide way more than enough since humanity would be using much less energy all concentrated together. Transportation would be just like in the Shimizu Mega City Pyramid, handled by thousands of elevators, walkways, and automated shuttle pods moving in tunnels inside the building. Life wouldn't exactly be very nice on a diet of sweet potatoes and never being able to leave the building, but in a catastrophic event like a nuclear war, global warming, or a meteorite impact that could cause living conditions on the outside to become lethal, then something similar to this may become necessary. The political situation inside would certainly be messy to say the least. There would probably be a wealthier section with more living space and a poorer section with less living space. It may take centuries and generations to build it, and most people would certainly not want to live this lifestyle, but still, it is technically possible that we could all live in the same amount of space that we do now in an area no larger than these islands in the Atlantic Ocean. This video has been brought to you in part by Audible, which is home to an unmatched number of audiobooks and spoken audio products. You can get a completely free 30-day trial by going to audible.com slash reallifelore, and if you think it's fun imagining what an entire civilization would look like inside of one building, then why not listen to The World Inside by Robert Silverberg. This book fully explores an entire universe and story set inside of a building much like what you just listened about, and goes into far more detail than I ever could in just an 8 minute long video. I use Audible to listen to audiobooks while I'm driving, stuck in traffic, working, or just for fun. It's a new year, so why not start off by listening to some of the greatest books ever written while driving to work or to school. You can get any book for free when you start your 30 day free trial, so if you find something that interests you besides the book that I suggested, then that's completely fine for you to download as well. You can listen straight off of your phone or tablet, so if you'd like to get started, please go to audible.com slash reallifelore. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to leave a comment if you'd like to discuss any aspect of this video, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed what you just watched, and we'll see you around next time.